Can you hear me? Yes. Thumbs up at the back. Can you hear me? That's it. I said thumbs, not fingers. Thumbs. <laughs> and not the middle finger, please. <laughs> How is everyone? Are we all okay? I feel like I need to do cheers, you know, everybody's just like, yeah, I've been walking around the photography show, I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I'm tired, dead on when it's not talking. Um, welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Uh, my name's Wayne Johns, uh, if you don't know who I am and you're just here because of the title, well thank you anyway. Uh, but I'm a fashion and beauty and advertising photographer and have been for over 25 years. I'm also a Fujifilm ex-photographer, not that I used to use them, but I'm a, an ex-ambassador. It's, it's a strange name, isn't it? Um, so today I thought we would just do something a little interesting and go for something dramatic lighting in fashion portraiture. And we're going to go a little bit towards the film noir sort of style. So you're not going to see the glorious colours of Fuji film because we're going to shoot it in black and white. Okay? Um, we'll work the lighting from one light at a time, we'll build it up slowly the half an hour will go very, very quickly. And then I'll just show you an alternative at the end of the weekend. If we can quickly swap it around, uh, we will if we have time. I'll do a little run through of the kit I'm using today. I'm tethered into Capture One Pro. You can't see it yet, so that's good, not yet. All right, okay, there it is. Test shot, it's gone. Ah, snooze you lose. <laughs> and it's really to show that Lighting doesn't have to be complicated. You just need to look a bit more with your eyes to see what your light is doing because your camera's not going to save you through all of this. Just remember, a camera's a digital box that records what you create. Okay, it's not a magical box. Sometimes, maybe. All right, but the lighting I'm using is not expensive. All right, these are little Pixapro Pika 200 Pro units or Godox AD 200 Pros if you want to call them by their brand name. Essential photo cell, they're not here today, unfortunately. I'm using a collapsible silver beauty dish, not a white one, because I want the extra contrast. And the silver one will give you a little bit more specular highlight. So my creative team then have to make sure my skin on my model is a bit more matted down so I don't get the shine and reflection, okay? A white one will be a little bit softer, and I just want that crisp punch if I can get it. And the difference being with the silver beauty dish is that it will be a bit brighter and a bit contrastier in the manner of speaking, but your light fall off will actually be a little bit quicker into shadow area, whereas the white one will be a little bit more forgiving. Normally for a beauty setup, we pull this quite close, almost arm's length from the model for beauty work, but I just want a bit more contrast in the black, so I'm pulling it back, but I'm also feathering it so that the hot spot of a beauty dish, which they traditionally happens, is not beaming off the face of my model. Just taking the edge off a bit, if you saw me move this, I moved about an inch. That, that's really all it needs, okay? I'm gonna start with a one light setup. We're gonna build in the shadows with the reflector to lift the dark side, as we call it. And then I'm gonna bring in a little fill with a little grid on them. And then we will just build up sort of a two light separation with a three light fill, supposedly, okay? One thing I wanted to show today was we're going to create some flawless, creamy bokeh. There's the magic word. Who shoots portraits of people anyway? Hands up? Yeah? Do you get sort of inundated with the word bokeh? Or bokeh? Bokeh, yeah. So you know there's that lovely diffusion and fraction of light in the background, the little tiny circles. And we all know to get really excellent bokeh. It's all down to the best lens you can buy, with the best elements of glass, and the number of shutters inside of it, okay? I'm gonna show you a very foolproof way to get flawless, perfect bokeh every single time, no matter what camera and lens you're using, and it will work perfectly without fail. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> the bokeh background, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I just knocked my model out of the process. <laughs> All right. Now, this is also trying to sort of give you a bit of insight into if you've got studios at home and things, maybe look around at the props that you've got. Because as a shoot, this kind of clashes a little bit and won't really work. And my model's in red today instead of black, but if you're doing a bit of film noir, you're kind of looking at it in colour and it doesn't make sense. 
but in black and white, it works perfectly. Okay? Luckily we're magnetic, so that's cool. So I guess we're So don't worry about spending hundreds, tens, sorry, hundreds and thousands of pounds on the best lens that you can get for the ultimate bokeh. Just buy one of these. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's not going to work on all your backgrounds if you're on location and things. You still have the mask of the art. Alright. Now, I'm tuning with the Fujifilm GFX100 today. Perhaps a little bit overkill for the stage. Because it's a 100 megapixel, it takes a little bit longer to come through. I'm using the 110mm lens for DSLR shooters in full frame, that's like 85mm for those on APS-C and you're on that sort of thing, uh, you're the other way around. So just work it out backwards, alright? 56. 56 for APS-C users. The 110 is one of my favourite portrait lenses and beauty lenses in the Fuji range, okay? So you have to bear with us until the image comes through because it does take a little while with 100 megapixels. I can't even see the screen, to be honest. Oh yeah, okay. Alright, this is our test shot. So what I'm doing, for those of you who don't know Fujifilm, they include in the camera bodies Fujifilm film simulations. And just quickly, what that is, is that Fuji have taken the analog film days, all the different films they used to make, which is how we used to get our effects, and they've made them as digital attachments inside the camera as a simulation. The good thing is that to capture one pro, I can apply those film simulation modes to my walls and I can either change them in camera or I can change them in Capture One Pro before the shoot, during the shoot or after the shoot. Okay, so we can change this video. It's still a raw shot, alright? Okay, ready? Right. Okay, so let's just do a little starting portrait. We'll build it up so you can see what this light is doing. Beautiful. Yeah. Right, so it's going to take a little while to come through. This is my starting shot. Well, your screens are a bit of a contrast to mine. A little bit bleached out on the highlights of yours. So there we are. A little bit hot on your screens, but not overexposed on mine. I'm sorry for the non-calibrated TV monitors. If anybody wants to see the images here, you can later. No overexposure whatsoever. Perfect. Can you shimmy that way a little bit? It's a tiny tiny. All right, so. We're going to get a bit of film noir. So, you notice my beauty dish, I have got a lot of light <coughs> spilling down over my model. I don't mind the highlight, because my model's skin tones, depending on the tone of your model's skin, is going to reflect more light or not reflect more light. So, I want that angular feel. Highlights are really strong, aren't they? Yeah, okay. But we're getting there, we're getting there. Now, if I just punch the blacks a little bit for your benefit, Glasses. Reading glasses, huh? Who invented those? <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pull the blacks a little bit for your screens. It now makes it too dark on my screen. Has that changed it? A little bit, so all I wanted. Didn't want to kill it yet. You guys are my eyes, okay? Give me a thumbs up and, or thumbs down, all right? <laughs> so you notice on my negative side, because my lighting is on what we call narrow lighting. It's on the narrowest side of my model's face, not the broad side. If my model turns this way, it now becomes broad lighting, not narrow. So I want the shadowing to be on my broad side and my light to be on my narrow side. Um, it is a lot more complementary for face shape and structure. But because this side is now too dark, even though I'm feathering the light across a little bit, I'm going to put a reflector in just to fill the shadows on the negative side. It is just propped on the stand, so if it falls off, feel free to laugh, I don't mind. Now, the thing is with reflectors, you've got to treat them a bit like a light. But the way you adjust the power is physically by moving it closer or further away. We don't want to go too mad, so because that light is actually coming past my model, it's going to hit a little bit of this and just lift my shadows ever, ever so gently. If it's not enough, then we can just move it closer to help lift the shadow areas. Remember, it's not really affecting the depth of our blacks. Okay? Cool. Turn to the light for me. Left hand, into the other, other way around, left handed. And right hand on the edge of the stool, bring it around to front, give me a shape. Perfect. Turn your body towards the light. 
perfect, lovely, head shake, gorgeous. Good. And again, nice. And again, beautiful chin down a touch. Beautiful, head towards the light, a little bit more. There you go, nice down the fraction. Open, 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 open. There you go, perfect. Good. Right. Okay, so if I go back to the first shot, can you see any difference in the contrast from when the reflector was in or not? What shot was it? What's the shot now? Is it making any difference? Did you see it as it came through? Yeah, have I got a nod or a shake? Anyone? You can see a difference. Okay, cool. So let's lift it a little bit more. Let's look at your screen. It does look bleached out there, doesn't it? The highlights. Yeah, terrible. Okay, so I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit more. I'm just bringing it in. It's so simple. Just don't go crazy. Don't need, don't need to overdo it. Okay. So, okay, and again, we'll shoot another one, and then we'll look at the image this time. So we wrap up some frames off. We'll look at the shadows as it comes through. As I say, it takes a little while. I'll have to make a big up. Oh, we can't see the arm anyway. Okay. And it falls over. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't bring a clamp, see? <laughs> Remember, if you don't want any of this to get filled, just raise this up. It's as simple as that, okay? Now, can you guys see a difference on a negative fill side if I bring that closer? Yeah? Anyone? Yeah, give me a yes, give me a no. Yeah, 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 I've got a nod, okay. Should we just go overboard with it and bring it super close? Flatten that side out. If you can keep this arm in front so I can see the shadow on that side and just give it a tilt, yeah, cool. So I'm going to bring it super close now. It's a little bit in front. It's going to fill this shadow side in here, a little bit of darkness here, and down this arm you see it the most. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Just let that shot come through, we'll just see that. For a reference point. But I'm using just the smallest, most portable equipment really, is tiny. These are only 200 watt heads. It's bleached it out completely now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a bit too much. Alright, so I just want to go overboard so you can see the difference. So let's just pull it back. If you wanted to add more shadow and more dynamics, just put a black one there instead as a negative fill. Okay, just, just do that, that'll be easier. I'm spinning, I I was going to travel light this year, I said. I've ended up with four lighting stands. Big reflector lighting cameras. <laughs> right. Okay, that's it. Nice asymmetric shape of shoulders, it's nice. Okay, let's bring that in now and make this way a little bit. Keep the arm position. Turn your shoulders to be a bit, just with the shape, good. Up and touch. There you are. Perfect. Lovely. Cool. Right. Let's see if we can add some of that shadow back on that negative side. Well, it does look blown out on your screen, doesn't it? I will turn this round if people want to look at it. It looks so different. Okay. Okay. So we've just added a bit more fill down the side just to give that dynamic range. Okay. So I've also got lovely hair. We don't want to lose it. At the end of the day, if you don't want any fill down this side, then take that reflector out completely. But what we're going to do with the second light, is we're just going to add a little bit of a highlight down this side. Can you see which part I get? So I've got a second light here. I'm going to switch on. So I'm just going to bring it in. This one's got a modeling bowl. Now with these heads, they've got interchangeable heads. You notice with that one, on this side, you can't see a modeling bulb it's because they've got a flash tube in it. And that takes away the modeling bulb function, whether this is a built-in uh, modeling bulb, uh, LED modeling bulb in this one. So, I've got a little grid in there. If you don't want to spill too much light everywhere else, we've got tiny barn doors on this. I'm just going to bring it a touch higher because I only want it to affect the hair. Excuse me, lift the hair a little bit. 
We're just going to add a bit more separation around this side. The good thing is with these, you can control them all from your transmitter on camera, so that works. We'll do a little live exposure to see what it's giving us as a reading. I might just drop my F-stop down the third stop for the privilege of you guys on here, okay? Because your screen is a lot brighter than mine, it looks, it looks a bit blown out, but you know, it's representing me, it's kind of embarrassing. So I'm literally only going to change my exposure by doing a third stop down on my aperture ring. Okay? As fashion photographers, when we're out shooting in ambient light, once we're in a flow of a shoot with the light, the clouds are changing, we generally change our, our exposures quickly with apertures, that's with, without stopping. All right, up and down the third stop here and there. Okay, so let's see what our hair light is doing. Good. Yeah. Should have a touch. There we go. Right, let's have a little look. You should be able to see this down the hair. There we go. A little bit of a punch. If you're getting too much on the shoulders, then just adjust the height of your light. These things are tiny. You could even bring it closer to reduce the spread of light and turn the power down. These are tiny, tiny little lights. If I didn't want so much light on my mother's lap, I'm going to turn the, adjust the head upwards just a little bit. Or if you wanted to go one step further, we can put an egg crate or a grid in the front. And basically what that'll do, that'll make your light go very straight without spreading it so much. But just be aware that your shadows will then get dark wherever it works very quickly. All right? Who would like to see it with the grid? Just for reference point. Yeah, okay, nods. Right, perfect. What I'll do, I'll leave the light position where it is. <laughs> and we'll take a look at it. So these are things you can do at home, in a home studio or a living room. Yeah, I'm not using a lot of space. I could push it all back to the wall. I've only brought it forward so I can get this lighting. I've got benefit space on stage. You could reduce the footprint of this if you wanted to. Right, let's have a look with the grid on. We'll change your exposure a little bit as well. It's so much nicer on here than the TV screens, don't they? <laughs> okay. Right. Just watch your lens for a little check. Yeah. That's good. One more, nice hold. Love, love, love. Okay, so let's just watch these come through. And you see that the light down on the mother's legs and things can change a little bit. I can't see that, it's like really, I can't see the picture. Is there any difference for you? Sorry? <laughs> it looks more blown out. It's looking more blown out to you on that screen as well. It's so dark on here though. Alright, let me just knock you down and see if we can change that exposure for you. So you get a better view on your screen, and I get the bad one on mine, okay? This is official though. And again, you remember your fill light on the hair can affect the shadow tone on your skin on the model's cheek on this side. So if it is, literally. Just turn the light towards the back of the head so we lose that spread down the cheek. I'm really moving it tiny, tiny amounts, okay? Right, let's try that one. And I've also dropped another third stop for you. So I started at 6.4, I'm now at F8. Actually, now the turns there, we'll look at Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice, good. Right, let's see if that works for you. I will turn my screen around for you in a moment, you can have a look. <laughs> okay. There's a difference in the, in the mid-tones I can see. Yes, yeah, let's say calibrate those screens, okay? Right? So, that's a simple option to hit a bit of a film noir kind of setup. If you wanted more light fall off here on the legs, the easiest way to do it is to just adjust the height of your light let it shoot, center of it shoot a little bit higher so you get less fall off down on your models, on your models uh, lower half. See if that makes any difference in your screens now. I don't even know what that screen looks like, so. <laughs> Is that one any different to no one? No? <laughs> They're both bad, okay. <laughs> Beautiful, one more. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Good. Right. You're my go-to eyes on this side, you know that. <laughs> 
Now we've got a uh, game not over, okay. There we go, okay. It's very dark on my screen, but it looks right. I'll turn it around for you when we finish. Okay, so that's one setup. Now, there's another way of doing this. We can go completely the other way and focus that light on the face even more. And the way that we can do that <coughs> is that if we swap these around, so I'm gonna bring this one around as my key light with a grid on. There you go, swap places. I'll we'll have to change the power of them in a minute. I'm gonna take this beauty dish off. Like so. I'm gonna throw a big umbrella softbox on. Okay? A lot of people think, what's he doing that for? For film noir, oh, that's not gonna work. Might be right. Might be wrong. Let's have a look. If I turn this quickly, can you all see the flash tube in this one? Yeah? Little flash tube in there. They literally just pop out. Okay? Interchangeable heads. Very, very portable as a lighting system. Go okay, right. Let's get this back in. Make sure it's all the way in. Just cover that up. Put that there. So let's get our main light right first. We've got the benefit of a modded bowl on this one. So I'm just watching the spread of light. This is where it's important to train your eyes on light. You know, I'm looking for the tiniest fluctuation. If you can train your eyes to see more light, it will certainly make you better photographers, whether you shoot indoor with, with, with flash or strobe or or even outdoor with natural light. Right. Just gonna drop this one down a bit so we don't make the shadows too harsh underneath. Yeah, is that directly at you? Yeah? Cool, right. Aiming just for the face, okay? Let's take a shot with just that one. And then you can see that we'll adjust the exposure as we go, just to fit, So I've learned I'm gonna do it by the aperture ring and not by power adjustment. <laughs> Good, right. I'm not even looking at screens, I'm just looking at you. <laughs> now you can, can you see the difference now. Woohoo! You got a result. It's even quite nice on its own, isn't it? It's a tiny little light, okay? But for me on my screen, my blacks and shadows are very, 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 very dark. So what we're going to do now is so I've still got my reflector. It's not really pulling a lot because this light source is so small. And remember, the smaller your light source, the harder your contrast will be. Okay, imagine you're like an artist paintbrush. If you want to paint small little details, you use a small brush. If you want to paint lots of big color, you use a big brush. Small brush, big brush. That's simple. Huh? Right, so I'm going to use this one now. Just here. All the way back here. And I'm using it just as a gentle, gentle fill for my whole scene. It won't affect my main exposure. It won't affect my highlights. The power of the distance is so low and so far, it will only really throw some light in my shadows and possibly my mid-tones. Okay? So don't be afraid to switch them around if you want to go a little bit more extreme. Because that on its own, although it looks reasonable on your screens, is not acceptable on my screen as a photographer and I wouldn't shoot it like that. Granted, we have the dynamic range in the GFX, we can pull all that detail back, like crazily, like nearly five stops. But that's not the way to shoot, is it? It's just to save you bacon when you've done something wrong. Right. So I'm gonna shoot here and we'll test the exposure of this one. I haven't changed the power output at all. Nice, that way the way your nose is going good, lovely, 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 good. Right, let's get a couple of those off. How are we looking? Is it bright? Okay, so now, I'm going to dial it down. Way down. From a half power to about eighth power. Okay. And again, just one shot, beautiful. Whisk through this. Got oh, fun, it's good. It's done right, time. I thought we were going to be pushed. Any better? 
Oh, there we go. Now you can see it's down. As a little. Much softer, chip it too high. Okay? It's softer. So now we're adding that shadow. We've lifted the shadow detail up, but we've not blown it to pieces. And we can possibly even afford, on your screens, not mine, to go a little bit less. All right? Take it down another half stop. That's all. Remember, this is only filling the shadows. All right? Just to, so we can retain a little bit of detail. Perfect. Good. Beautiful. Good. Chin shoulders from me. Bring your shoulder around a little bit. There you go. There you go. Chin down and touch. Eyes here. Perfect. Good. Good. Hold. Good. Once more. Good. Beautiful. Right. And the good thing is, also, I'm shooting tethered. Who shoots tethered? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Anyone shoot in studio that doesn't shoot tethered? A few people? I would recommend giving it a go, okay? If you shoot line group, you may have a few connection problems. I'm not saying line group's not good, but tethered shooting on line group is sometimes problematic. Um, but obviously, any adjustment I make on this image applies to every other image I shoot from there on. So it saves you a lot of time in post-production if you want to change a lot of images in terms of exposure and contrast. If I change it now, I can just carry on shooting and it'll all be there. Do you like it a little bit darker? Yeah, a little bit darker, okay. Let's go down. 16th power on this one now. This one's remained the same. Okay, have a little bit of higher angle, I think. Good, nice. Another one, good. Shoot to me. Tilt your head, good. Beautiful. One more. Good. Right. Now are we darker? Yeah. More acceptable? Anyone happy? Give us some nods. Okay. Okay. So look, we're feathering a lie off. Good. And again, if that's still a bit too much, just turn the power down. Alright? I only want to fill, excuse me, I only want to fill the shadows. I don't want to affect anything else going on. And again, because it's filling all the shadows, this one's kind of adding to my negative side as well. So if, I'm, if it's filling my negative side nicely, we can even add a bit more drama, and we'll flip this one round, and we'll put the black side in instead. So I'm filling all my other shadows, my black areas, but I want to add a bit more dynamics and subtract a bit from that side instead. So a bit of a negative fill. Let's bring it a bit closer. Let's make it extreme so you can see. Down a French day. Into that good, love good. One more. One more shake. Good, beautiful. Woo. There we go. Right. So look at that one. Final shot. How's that? Like it? Like it. So you notice how I've added more shadow on the negative side now. What I'm doing is only subtle differences. We don't need to go too extreme. A lot of people may go, oh, it's a little bit dark. I'll rock it up 3,000% on power. And then, oh, that's too Baby steps, say like baby steps. If you can see the subtle differences, your highlights, and your mid-tones, and your shadows, and everything in between, it will make you read light a lot better and make you a better photographer, especially when it comes to portraiture and skin tone. You've got to remember, my model's got quite an olive skin tone. You might shoot more of a redhead with a pale skin tone, and that's going to reflect a lot more light and affect everything that you do with your lights. Um, or you may shoot darker skin, which then you know, absorbs a lot more light, so you have to up the power and everything. Okay. Good timing. How's that for timing? Good at the back? Two minutes. Cool. Well, I think I won't change anything from there. We've managed to cover a couple of lighting setups for you, ranging from a simple one light in a silver beauty dish for the contrast and the punch. And then we add a little bit of fill simply with a reflector. You can do this whole thing with one light and a reflector if you wanted to, but we wanted to add a bit of hair separation on the first shot, so we pulled in a tiny, tiny handheld grid um, just to pop that highlight. And now you know the most amazing trick of how to get the ultimate bow cut. All right. Thank you very much. My name is Wayne Johns. Appreciate you sitting through my local. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. If you have any questions, um, I'll be here. I'm happy. Please come up and feel free to ask. Thank you very much.